Hola gente del canal, esto es Mipel City y hoy tenemos el placer y el orgullo de tener en el canal al gran creador de juego de mesa, el doctor Rainer Nizia. Muchas gracias, bienvenido. Thank you for having me. Ok, eh, como ya sabéis que mi inglés es muy regulero para las entrevistas, tenemos aquí a Alba, digo bien, que nos va a echar una mano con, con todo el tema del inglés. Porque yo no hablo alemán y, y, y Rainer Nietzsche no habla español, así que, ok. Bueno, lo primero que quería preguntarte, eh, primera vez en España, conocías Granada, eh, ¿qué te está pareciendo la feria? Is this your first time in Spain um, and Granada? What do you think about the city and the event? I've been many times in Spain, yes. but this is my first time to Granada. Okay. The closest I ever got to Granada was Cordoba, yeah, where exactly. I was at the game festival. But uh, this is my first time and I'm extremely impressed actually about the festival. It was very, very inviting, lots of fun, lots of people, uh, just brilliant. Okay. Has podido visitar la Alhambra? Has visto la ciudad? Have you been able to visit the Alhambra and the well the city uh, i've seen the alhambra yes yeah. uh, right when we arrived and i'm actually staying a few days longer okay so the city is the next day is okay uh, so for the weekend i won't really focus on the fair because the fair is so interesting that there's no time for anything else okay bueno, todas estas preguntas porque yo soy de granada y, y, y siento mucho orgullo de que esté hoy hoy en esta feria He's asking all these questions about Granada because he is from Granada and he's very proud that you are here. Okay. I'm extremely happy to be here. <laughs> okay. Bueno, vamos a empezar ya con, con la chicha. Eh, seguro que le han preguntado muchas veces cuál ha sido su juego favorito, eh, cuál ha sido el juego que ha producido que más le ha gustado. Yo imagino que eso es muy difícil porque eso es como cortarte un dedo de la mano o elegir un hijo. Eh, yo quiero saber eh, cuál ha sido ese juego que ha supuesto más quebraderos de cabeza en su creación? ¿Cuál ha sido el más difícil? So you've been asked many, many times what's your favorite mm -hmm. game and it, this is like uh, cutting your own finger or um, picking your the best t uh, kid but he would like to know which game has been the most difficult for you to create. Again, I don't think there is uh, one answer because in my career I've tried to widen my experience and not just work in one field. And so when I started I did more the gamers games. Yes. Uh, one of the early challenges was uh, the Lord of the Rings game yes. because this one when you look at the book you need to be true to the spirit of the book and suddenly hair grow on your feet because you become a hobbit and you need to design a cooperative game. Okay. I think the Lord of the Rings was the first serious cooperative game in starting a whole genre. Okay. So that's something which was a lot of work, but which also was a lot of fun and I'm very proud of it. Okay. I think the game which has been the most work most difficult and most work is something else yes. uh, was actually the Blue Moon World okay. because the Blue Moon World consists of initially eight and then a few more people mm -hmm. and each people is its own deck of cards and you can play each deck against each and you know how the complexity increases with how many can be played against which and you need to test them all and when you change one you need to retest everything okay. so that was a big challenge. De lo que él... lo que, sí, le ha dicho, he visto, uh -huh. me ha dicho que uno de los juegos más difíciles ha sido uh -huh. El Señor de los Anillos por la sí. temática, tratar de plasmar uh -huh. el espíritu y tal. ¿Lo demás? El, bueno, lo demás, el Blue Moon, Moon eh, ha sido el, el... porque está entre el más difícil de, como tal de complejidad y el más difícil de crear. Vale. Un poco esa ha sido la, la diferencia que él quería hacer. Ok, perfecto. Eh, quería seguir preguntándole, eh, cuando usted se pone a crear un juego de mesa, Ahí siempre está la, eh, el pensar que, qué prima más, la mecánica, la temática, ¿cómo lo hace usted? Eh, primero se centra en la mecánica, después busca una temática, o dice, creo que tiene que haber un juego sobre eh, una temática concreta y usted después busca cómo implantar. ¿Cómo lo hace? So when you start or you, you want to create a, a new game, um, 
what's your focus? Do you start with the mechanics or do you start with the idea of the, the game itself? For me, game design is not science. I'm a scientist, but it's not that you go through step by step by step. Yes. Because then you're not innovative. Okay. Uh, science says it needs to be a repeatable experiment. Yes. Creating a game is an art because you don't want to repeat it, you want to have something new. Mm. That also means with respect to what do I start with, I look for ever new innovative entry points. And that can come from a new TV series, that can come from a new technology which you suddenly can produce. Yes. Um, it can come from a new idea for a mechanism, yes. um, new models, new materials, Anything. In the end, it doesn't really matter what you started with. In the end, people must not even be able to differentiate different components. They must just melt into one natural form. Okay. Marce, eh, un poco lo que ha querido decir es que eh, él es científico, entonces, mm. bueno, en ciencia tienes, cuando quieres hacer algo tienes que seguir una serie de pasos que no puedes saltarte. Dice, hace A, B y C mm -hmm. y siempre van a ser A, B y C. A la hora de crear un juego de mesa, no puedes seguir esa dinámica porque si no todos los juegos serían iguales. Exacto. Entonces lo que tienes que hacer es empezar por algún sitio y, e empezar a ser imaginativo, mucho más creativo. Y al final ir cogiendo ideas pues, de series, de películas, de lo que en ese momento es más relevante, eh, también entra en juego un poco pues, lo que sería la tecnología y a partir de ahí ya crear. Vale. Fantástico. Eh, tengo mucho interés en saber un, un autor que lleva tanto tiempo en el mundo de los juegos de mesa que que ha producido tanto y ha creado tanto, eh, ¿cómo ve usted actualmente el mundo de los juegos de mesa y, y cómo, lo ve, cómo piensa que va a estar dentro de 10 años? ¿Cómo será este mundo de los juegos de mesa o qué mecánicas pre predominarán en este mundo? So you've been in the game industry for a long time. Um, what do you think is going to be in 10 years time? Difficult question. This is an easy question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the, um, there are several answers. One is games are a mirror of our time. And so as our life continues and develops, the game will follow you. So what is relevant for people and exciting for people will be the game. It's the first point. The other point is, in my opinion, it is partially a lucky process. When one game, for whatever reason, becomes successful, and that can be just a lucky coincidence that the first reviewers like it, you get the critical mass, and people buy it, and suddenly things happen. And once you have such a lucky coincidence, you make your own luck. It's not lucky with respect to not investing in it, so it's, it's hard work, but once you're lucky to bring one of the foreground, it may actually, such a game may actually then constitute a new trend. And this new trend may take the industry into a completely new direction. I think the cooperative games with a lot of rings yes. was one. I also think the Magic the Gathering, the collectible card games, just suddenly shot up and it just influences the whole industry. Okay. So you never know what sticks up and then influences the game. Bueno, no sabe realmente la, la respuesta, pero sí que, que es cierto que, bueno, que la industria del juego evoluciona, igual que evoluciona la humanidad. Entonces, los juegos que en, hace años eran relevantes, a día de hoy a lo mejor no lo son. Y muchas veces tienes que jugar también un poco con qué es la moda en ese momento. Claro. ¿no? Y entonces ir cogiendo todos esos elementos que van a seguir con la moda. Eh, habla también un poco de lo que ocurría hace muchos años ¿no? con el juego cooperativo de, del Señor de los Anillos sí. y cuando también apareció Magic the Gathering, ¿no? que, cómo ha influenciado a partir de ahí todos los juegos de cartas. Vale, perfecto. Bueno, eh, Rainer, siendo un autor con tantos juegos, creo que tiene usted unos 800 juegos aproximadamente, visto en la BGG, eh, creo que tiene que ser muy difícil recordar eh, todos sus juegos. Entonces, le iba a proponer jugar a algo. Yo he traído algunos elementos de sus juegos y me gustaría probar con usted y jugar a ver cuántos de, su, de los elementos de su juego es capaz de reconocer. Si usted quiere jugar conmigo. 
so you you have uh, nearly 800 games um, and he's wondering whether you will know all of them mm -hmm. at this point and he would like to play with you uh, a little game he's got some pieces from uh, some of your okay. games and he would like you to guess which one absolutely fine <laughs> I think pieces should be better. <laughs> if you ask me for individual rules, then I would probably have to faint because uh, so many games, you cannot remember the individual rules. And for me, it's even harder because I just don't know the one rule set, but we have tested many different versions. Yes. And then which one was the final one? After some years, <laughs> it just uh, kind of becomes a fog and you need okay. to remind yourself. Podemos probar. Ok, perfecto. Claro, yo entiendo que después, según cada editorial, eh, hace unas modificaciones diferentes. Ok, vamos a empezar con uno sencillo. Lo enseñamos a cámara para que todo el mundo lo vea. Y se lo, enseña, y se lo entregamos al señor Nicia. The interest of the people. It was even nominated for the game of the year, and it is a great success. But we have sold more than a million copies of this whole game, and so I think it brought a lot of enjoyment to lots of people. Se puede decir este es un juego que nosotros hemos descubierto sabiendo que venía el doctor Nicia a Granada, que hemos, lo hemos jugado estas semanas por primera vez, y ya se ha convertido en uno de los juegos favoritos, por ejemplo, de mi mujer. Um, he has discovered this game a few weeks ago, and he has been playing since then. And it's uh, from now is his wife a uh, best game. Oh, very nice. Okay. Thank you. Bueno, la segunda pieza o elemento que vamos a enseñar va a ser esta losetita. Seguro que lo sabéis los que lo estáis viendo. Pero Alicia. Yes. That is. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Boy. I initially thought, and I still believe, this is my city. Yes. I was a bit hesitant because we have prosperity, we have some other uh, games okay. which have similar tiles. And you know, the challenge is sometimes there are many different editions all over the world, and sometimes they adjust uh, the, the graphics and then know all the editions. But I actually cheated because I looked on the back, and that yes. confirmed that this is one of the player symbols, and okay. therefore I. Was absolutely sure. I had never any doubt it okay. was uh, my city. Congratulations. Can I introduce you a little bit? I doubted at the beginning what it was. So, well, I had to give a little bit of a turn, but then it was clear that it was my city. Very good. Let's try this one. I don't know if you can see it. It's a boat of orange crystal, red color. For Dr. Nicia. This comes from Mille Fiori. I believe, um, because it's a transparent ga uh, game piece. And Mille Fiori is about making glass yes. in Italy, and very colorful glasses. And so we have introduced lots of transparent pieces which we put on the board. Yes. And then we also transport the glass into the world. And therefore, we need ships. And therefore, the ships also became transparent. And so I am almost certain that this is from Mille Fiori, the yeah. uh, card game with a big board and the glass in it. Ahora mismo, eh, yo venía corriendo porque estaba terminando una partida de Mille Fiori con mi hijo, que es la primera vez que la jugaba, y lo, lo han disfrutado muchísimo. He was running late to the interview because he was just playing this game with his son. Ok, bueno, vamos a sacar dos más y lo dejamos. Bueno, esta pieza creo que es bastante difícil. No sé si alguien podrá saberlo. Tú se lo, tú se lo sabes, ¿no? It gets more complicated. This is one of my speeches. Yes. <laughs> no, this should be from um, Equinox. Yes. This is a republication of um, hmm, was had many names before. Oh, it me the, the old name. What's, oh, test for you. What's the old name of Equinox? Uh, por, the Purple um, Box. The Purple Box, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we had um, um, Colossal Arena. It was initially okay, okay, it was okay. Colossal Arena, 
and then we republished it and they put very nice pieces in that in that requirement there. So it's relatively simple but engaging game because it started out I lived in England yes. and it started out as a cheaple a steeplechase game because they have they're very fond of uh, horse racing. And so the Grand National, the most famous uh, horse racing in England, they have very high hurdles and a lot of horses do not make the hurdles. Okay. Not very good for the horses, um, but that inspired me to say, okay, so we can actually have a race where in every round, the lowest one just goes out. So you play the cards and you play over the cards. So as soon as everybody has a card, the lowest round out. Okay, fantastic. Un poquito. Sí. Um, este juego fue reeditado. En, anteriormente se llamaba de otra manera. Um, y bueno, y él vivió en Inglaterra. Entonces se inspiró un poco en el juego eh, en las carreras de caballos, ¿no? que son tan, tan famosas en, sí. en Reino Unido. Y bueno, la idea era un poco eso: pues, el verla, el ver la, la acogida ¿no? que tienen la, las carreras de caballo allí, el, el caballo que se queda al último, el que se queda fuera. ¿no? Es un poco el, la temática. Vale, bueno, vamos a empezar ya, vamos a terminar ya con la última pieza. Tenemos más, pero vamos a dejar aquí. Tenemos aquí un pequeño templo de color rojo. A ver qué tal. Now I am in trouble. Because history, especially the ancient and the temples, is a very big fond uh, theme for me. And I have made several ones, and there were re-editions with nice pieces. Oh my god. <laughs> um, no, I... Podemos dar una pizza? Do you need any clue? Yes. Uh, <laughs> River. Well, most of my games are in rivers. <laughs> it's not yellow and young, see? No, are you sure? Is it yellow and young? Yes. yes. In Spain, it's in yellow and young. I don't know in Germany. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Because we are just republishing this yellow okay. and young. It's yellow. And Okay, so I failed on this one. I apologize. Okay, perfect. Um, they caught me. Let's see. Had several suspicions. Okay. Well done, you got Bueno, it. ya está, perfecto. Espero que hayas disfrutado del juego y que te haya gustado. Eh, ya para terminar, antes de despedirnos de, del señor Rey Mernicia, eh, vamos a, a entregarle un regalo que, que le, hemos, le hicimos el año pasado a Simone Luciani y el anterior se lo hicimos también a Daniele Tazzini. Y este año, pues, le toca el turno a usted. Es un postre típico de, de Granada. Espero que lo disfrute y, y que le guste. ¿Me lo puedes acercar? No te lo comas. Bueno, estos son unos pastelitos típicos de Granada. Eh, son para usted. Es un típico dessert de Granada, called Pionono. Oh, ¿y esto es para mí? Sí, es para ti. Wow, this looks extremely With coffee later. <laughs> inviting. God, thank you, thank okay. you very much. Thank you, Leslie. It's so nice thank of you. you and so kind of you. Uh, I think if I eat them all in, in one go, I will faint. So I will <laughs> spare them over individual days and I will carefully read the story. Okay. Thank you very much. For okay, that. thank you. Muchas gracias a usted. Bueno, pues chicos, pues hasta aquí la, la entrevista de hoy con el doctor Rainer Nicia. Es una persona, eh, ya la estoy viendo, es un coco, como dicen en España, de, de los juegos de mesa y, y se lo sabe todo. No, no, ha, no se ha equivocado en ninguno prácticamente. Nada, darle muchas mucha gracias por, por estar aquí, por la entrevista y nos vemos en el próximo vídeo. Adiós, adiós. Ah, but, bueno. <laughs> there is Cotta. Ah, is the boss. Yes. And Cotta was not interviewed and he actually is the inspector. And if he's not happy, he will not allow the interview. And also, I'm not sure why we are talking about games. I thought this was a game, of, a, a, a session about mathematics and yes. talking about the unsolved Riemann equation where Cotta has been working for 
desperately many years and is close to solving it. So he wanted to give a long three hour lecture on his progress. So we are kind of confused what we have been discussing so far. Can you please explain, particularly to Mr. Cotta, the inspector? Sale en plano, ¿verdad? Sí. Bueno, que en toda, la, en toda la, la entrevista, pues que no hemos olvidado de hablar de, de Cota, sí. eh, que es aparte de la mascota, es inspector, ¿vale? Y bueno, y que en realidad, pues que no sabe muy bien esto de la, la entrevista sobre juego de mesa, cuando en realidad él pensaba que íbamos a hablar de matemáticas. Sí, es verdad, pero lo que pasa es que yo siempre he sacado muy malas notas en matemáticas. He's been very bad at mathematics. <laughs> well, then we should have another three-hour session because yes. then we can bring you up to speed and maybe you can help Kota solve the unsolved well, equation. Pues nada, nos quedaremos a Kota, el doctor Nietzsche y yo, pues dando clases de repaso de matemáticas. <laughs> <laughs> Muchas gracias por todo. Thank you. Okay. Kota says thank you as well. Hello. Whoops. Oh, I'm tired now. Se ha caído. <laughs> Adiós, chicos.